Ever have a dream of discovering something amazing? We all want to make a positive difference in the world, don't we? Whether that means discovering a cure for cancer or ending world hunger. Sadly, the strange and amazing inventions of the innovators on this list have backfired in the most horrifying ways imaginable. So let's look at some of the inventors that met their demise at the hands of their own inventions, ranging from the pinnacles to the depths. Don't forget to subscribe and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Here we go. Dog. How I always envied having a cool name in my youth. For a while, I tried going by Snakebite Venom, but it never really took off. I was therefore a little interested in the origins of the name Mad Mike Hughes when I first heard about him. You see, Mad Mike drove limousines during the day and performed stunts and was a Terry Plate conspiracy theorist at night. Yes, he truly was nuts, which is why he goes by the nickname Mad Mike. Mike had no money, therefore he had to crowdsource the entire process to pay his desire to do multiple rocket missions into space to take flat record photos. In total, he raised $7,875, which doesn't seem enough to build a safe rocket. But after a successful test flight on March 24, 2018, Mike returned safely to Earth after reaching speeds of 350 miles per hour at heights of over 1,800 feet. I'm impressed. However, not content with just one flight, Mike decided to try another launch in February 2020. This one didn't go as planned. Witnesses on the scene said they saw the rocket rub against the launch vehicle before liftoff. Then, once airborne, the descent parachute was ripped from the rocket. With no way to land safely, Mad Mike's furious flight ended horribly enough in a smoking pile of scrap metal on the ground. Worst of all, there was a film crew there to capture it all for a TV show. Man, I still can't believe that asinine astronaut built a working rocket with only $7,000. I'm surprised he didn't go so far as to attach himself to the outside. Then he really would have gone out with a bang. So seriously, the homemade rocket was actually pretty impressive despite the tragedy. NASA could have given him a job. That's if NASA is even real. No, they're real. Stop that. Social media platforms these days reward diligence. You know, someone who started from nothing and worked hard to build themselves up. Henry Wynn Stanley was one of those with an astute business sense. This English painter, engineer, and merchant from the 17th century bought five commerce ships with the proceeds from his paintings. Sadly, living was hard on the rise, and two of these ships met their violent demise on the rocks of Eddystone, which is close to Plymouth, England. The fact that nothing was being done to safeguard ships traveling through these hazardous waters infuriated when Stanley dot to make sure that other merchants wouldn't experience the same fate as he had, he made the decision to take matters into his own hands and started about building Eddie Stone's first lighthouse. The massive octagonal tower took 10 years to build, starting in 1696 and ending in 1698. When Stanley took great pride in his craft, perhaps a little too much. Massive waves and exceptionally severe weather pounded the British coast during the Great Storm of 1703. When Stanley responded by racing to his lighthouse to make a few minor repairs and deciding that it was sturdy enough to endure any storm. Let's just say that by daybreak, when Stanley and the lighthouse had vanished. Oh no. Eddystone Lighthouse has undergone numerous rebuilds and levels since when Stanley's death. However, since 1881, its fourth and current form has stood tall. Heave heave. Looks like they've finally figured out a winning formula after all these years. If you haven't been living under a rock in 2023, you have undoubtedly heard about the tragic tale of the missing Titanic submarine. Permit me to briefly summarize for you. Stockton Rush, an American businessman and the co-founder and CEO of Oceangate, an underwater exploration company, created a tiny submarine that might be used to see the Titanic wreckage. Rush, who was well known for being against health and safety, once said, safety is just wasteful at some point. Avoid taking any action if you wish to stay safe. And it cost him, oh my god. On June 18, he and four other people were on board the submarine when communication with the surface vessel NV Polar Prince was lost. The French, American, and Canadian governments conducted search and rescue operations over several days, and the 
incident gained significant worldwide attention. The first pieces of debris were found more nearly 1,500 feet from the Titanic OG on June 22. In a statement, Ocean Gage stated that they thought Rush and the other travelers had sadly perished. Oh! What then transpired? Since the submarine's interiors were unable to maintain the exterior pressure, the debris correlated with a decline in internal pressure. It did not explode where it went boom, instead, it inverted, collapsing like a tin can under a tire. Hurt. That is disgusting. See, Rush is free to make fun of health and safety all he wants, but only if it means jeopardizing his personal safety. You'd best adhere to the to the letter when people entrust you with their well-being. Let's veer off course. It would be absurd to believe that these creators weren't the most intelligent people alive. Some of them were, in fact, the brightest minds of their day. Consider the case of Abu Nasr al-Jawari. Sometime in the 10th century, he was born in Kazakhstan and became a renowned Persian scholar. In addition to being a lexicographer, he also wrote a small book. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. The dictionary is the name of it. Oops. Okay, it's not the dictionary you and I use today. It was entirely in Arabic, but still, a smart guy. Al-Jawari spent his days traveling around the Middle East before settling in Nishapur, in modern Iran. But that's where things took a turn for the worse for him. You see, according to some scholars, despite his incredible intelligence, Al-Jawari began to suffer from severe mental delusions about being a burnt. What? Al-Jawari, who had spent months building on two wooden wings, ascended to the mosque roof of Nishapur in the first decade of the 11th century. Al-Jawari thought he might fulfill his dream of flying with these specially made wings. It didn't quite go as planned, no. The birdman leaped to the roof of the mosque, beating his wings wildly before swooping to the ground, his beak first. I apologize, poor guy. It seems that he had not yet discovered the term dum dum for his lexicon. A ball of bad luck. Motorcycle madness. Few things in life are objectively cool. Tight jeans, planking and playing dance dance revolution with your buddies, that's it. Oh, and motorcycles, motorcycles are cool. And we owe it all to Sylvester H. Roper. This American inventor specialized in automotive innovations and made a name for himself in 1863 for developing a steam-powered carriage, one of the first functional automobiles in the first real motorcycle, the Velocipede in 1867. Look, it's not a Harley, but I bet in Roper's day if you rode up on one of these bad boys, you'd have every woman in the 19th century showing you her ankles. However, as I know all too well, being cool all the time comes at a terrible price. On June 1, 1896, Roper rode one of his last Velocipede models to the Charles River bike track in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Following many fast laps at a whooping 40 miles per hour and overtaking pro riders, Roper's bike abruptly shook and began to weave around the track. And with that, Roper died instantly, collapsing upon his bike's handlebars. Elegant solutions aren't necessarily the most sensible ones. Franz Reichelt, an Austro-Hungarian tailor, believed that function always won out over form. His obsession was creating an aviator suit that, in an emergency, could fold into a parachute, allowing the wearer to return to Earth safely. And it's so stylish, man. Reichelt had launched a test dummy from his Paris fifth floor balcony, successfully completing certain tests on his swagger suit. But he needed a far higher platform to test his innovation if he was serious about it taking off. He asked the prefecture de police in Paris for months before they finally consented to let him test it from the top of the Eiffel Tower in 1912. On the day of the test, however, Reichelt made the decision to use an even larger mannequin, himself, instead of the mannequin he had used to test the costume. Reichelt chose to carry out this action even though it wasn't specified in the agreement with the police. He leaped. But his parachute did not open, and he fell about 200 feet to the earth, falling with a devastating impact. Unfortunately, Reichelt made headlines and his name became synonymous with bad things throughout France. That's not the legacy that everyone aspires to, nowadays. Some are lost, and some are won.
The Rozier made multiple attempts to launch his unique balloon from Boulogne sur Mer, but it wasn't until June 15, 1785, that he and Pierre Romain succeeded in doing so. Everything appeared to be going well after a successful takeoff, but then the wind suddenly changed and they were forced to retreat almost three miles past their starting location. How unfortunate! Before the balloon exploded spectacularly into flames close to Wimerux, de Rogier and Romain managed to get back in line and headed in the right direction, covering a paltry 7 kilometers. What say you about that? Indeed. I'm not sure, but dual fuel might have been de Rogier's undoing. Given how highly flammable hydrogen is, there's a probability the hydrogen tank caught fire and burned the balloon to ash. At a height of perhaps 1,500 feet, de Rogier and his friend leaped to the ground and disappeared. I apologize. How about a spectacular exit? That's all I have to share with you today. I appreciate you watching this film with me about innovators who were slain by their own creations. I hope you found it as entertaining as I did. Don't forget leaving a comment. On the other hand, I'm open to suggestions for upcoming episodes. To ensure you don't miss any of the newest videos, make sure to subscribe. I'll be back soon with more awesome stuff. While you wait, keep in mind that while creativity is admirable, it can also be your final resort.